Hello and welcome to this CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto, California in the CUBE studios. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. We are here with a hot startup, really working on some real super important security technology for the cloud. Uh, great company, Orca Security, Avi Shua, CEO and co-founder. Avi, thank you for coming on the CUBE and uh, share your story. Thanks for having me. So one of the biggest problems that uh, enterprises in large scale, people who are going to the cloud and are in the cloud and are evolving with cloud native have realized that the pace of change and the scale is a benefit to the organizations, but the security teams and getting that security equation right is always challenging and it's and changing. You guys have a solution for that. I really want to hear what you guys are doing. I like what you're, what you're talking about. I like what you're thinking about and you have some potentially new technology. Let's get into it. So um, before we get started, talk about what is um, Orca Security? What do you guys do? What problem do you solve? So what we invented in Orca is a unique technology called side scanning that essentially enables us to connect to any cloud environment in a way which is as simple as installing a smartphone application and getting a full stack visibility of your security posture, meaning seeing all of the risk, whether it's a vulnerability, misconfiguration, lateral movement risk, workload that already have been compromised and more and more, literally in minutes without deploying any agent, without running any network scanners, literally with no change. And while it sounds to many of us like it can't happen, it's snake oil, it's simply because we are so used to on-premise environment where it simply wasn't in possible in physical server, but it is possible in the cloud. Yeah, and you know, we've had many CISOs on theCUBE over the years. Um, one um, CISO told us that, and this is a direct quote, I'll find the clip uh, and share it on Twitter, but he said, the cloud's more secure than on-premise because there's more, more changes going on. Um, and I asked him, okay, how did you do it? He says, it's hard, you got to stay on top of it. A lot of people go to the cloud and they see some security benefits with the scale, um, but they're gaps. You guys are building something that, that solves those gaps, those blind spots, because of things are always changing. You're adding more services. Sometimes you're integrating. You now have containers that could have, uh, for instance, um, you know, uh, malware on it that gets introduced into a cluster. All kinds of things can go on. Uh, in, in, a in a cloud environment that was fine yesterday. You could have a production cluster that's infected. So you have all these new things. How do you figure out the gaps and the blind spots? That's what you guys do, I believe. What's the, what are the gaps in cloud security? Share with us. So definitely you're completely correct. You know, I'm, uh, I totally agree the cloud can be dramatically more secure than the on-prem. Uh, at the end of the day, Unlike an on-prem data center where can, someone can come, plug a new firewall, plug a new switch, change things, and if you don't instrument it, you won't see what's inside. This is not possible in the cloud. In the cloud, it's all code. It, it's all running on one infrastructure that can be used for the instrumentation. On the other hand, the cloud enabled businesses to act dramatically faster. When I say dramatically, you're talking about order of magnitude faster. You can create new networks in a matter of minutes, workloads can come and go within seconds. And this creates a lot of changes that simply haven't happened before. And it, it involves a lot of challenges also from security instrumentation point of view. And you cannot use the same methodologies that you used for the on-prem because if you use them, you're going to lose. There were a compromise that worked for a certain physics, certain set of constraints that no longer apply. And our thesis is that essentially you need to use the capabilities of the cloud itself for the instrumentation of everything that can, that runs on the cloud. And when you do that, by, by definition, you have full coverage because if it's run on the cloud, it can be instrumented on the cloud. This is essentially what Orca does. And you are able to have this full visibility for all of the risk and the importance because all of them are essentially virtual workload that we are able to analyze. What are some of the blind spots in the public cloud, for instance, I mean, um, that you guys are seeing that you guys um, point out or see with the software and the services that you guys have? So the most common ones are the things that we have seen in the last decades. I don't think they are materially different, simply on steroids. We see things that people, services that are launched, nobody maintained for years. You see uh, things like improper segmentation, that everyone have permission to access everything. Uh, and therefore, if one environment is breached, everything is breached. 
we see if organization where something was dramatically hardened. So people found a way to, a very common thing is that uh, now everyone talks about CIM and uh, tightening the permission and making sure that every workload have only the capabilities that they need. But sometimes developers are a bit lazy, so they'll work by that, but also have keys that are stored that can bypass the entire mechanism that, again, everyone can do everything on any environment. So at the end of the day, I think that the most common thing is the, the standard hygiene issues, making sure that your environment is patched, that things are tightened, there is no alternative ways to go to the environment at scale. Because at the end of the day, the hardest thing for a security professional, you need to secure everything. The attacker just need to find one thing that was missed. And you guys provide that visibility into, into the cloud to, to identify those. Exactly. I think one of the top reasons that we implemented Orca using the side scanning technology that I've invented is essentially because it guarantees coverage. For the first time, we can guarantee you that if you scan it, that way we'll see every instance, every workload, every container, regardless of it's running as a native workload, whether it's a Kubernetes, whether it's a serverless function, we see it all because we don't rely on any per asset integration. We don't rely on friction within the organization. So many times in my career, I've been in discussion with customer that has been breached. And when we got to the core of the issue, it was, you couldn't, you haven't installed that agent, you haven't configured that firewall, the IPS was not uh, up to date, so the protections weren't applied. So this is technically true, but it doesn't solve the customer problem, which is I need the security to be applied to all of my environment. And I can't rely on people to do manual processes because they will fail. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you can't get everything now and the velocity, the volume of activity. So let me just get this right. So you guys are scanning containers. So the, the risk I hear a lot is, you know, with Kubernetes uh, in, in containers is a fully secure cluster could have a container come in with malware and, pe so, and penetrate. And even if it's air gap, that's still there, still problematic. You would scan that is that how it would work? So yes, but so for nothing, but we are not scanning only containers. The essence of Orca is scanning the cloud environment holistically. We scan your cloud configuration, we scan your Kubernetes configuration, we scan your dockers, the, the containers that run on top of them, we scan the images that are installed, and we scan the permission that these images are running. And most importantly, we combine these data points. So it's not like you buy one solution that looked your AWS configuration is a different solution that look at your virtual machines that run the cluster, another one that looks at your cluster configuration, another one that look at the web server, and one that look at the identity. And then you have results from five different tools that each one of them claims that this is the most important issue. And, but in, the fa in fact, you need to infuse the data and understand yourself what is the most important items or how they are correlated. We do it in an holistic way. And at the end of the day, security is more about thinking as graphs, as vectors, rather than list. So I'm able to tell you something like, this is a container, which is vulnerable. It has permission to access your sensitive data. It's running on a walk and on a pod that is indirectly connected to the internet through this load balancer, which is exposed. So this is an attack vector that can be utilized versus just a tool that will say you have a vulnerable containers, but you might have hundreds where 99% of them are not exposed. Got it, so it's really more logical common sense vectoring versus the old way, which was based on perimeter based control points, right? So is that why, I get, is that right? Is that, you're looking at it like, okay, whole new view of it, not necessarily old way. Is that right? It, it, yes, it is right. We are looking at it and is one problem that is handled in one tool that have one unified data model and on top of that, one scanning technology that can provide all the necessary data. We are not a tool that say install vulnerability scanner, install identity access management tools and infuse all of the data to Orca and will make sense. And if you haven't installed the tools, screw you, it's not our problem. We are scanning all of your environment, all of your containers, virtual machines, serverless function, configure, cloud configuration using our technology. We understand the risk, we put them in a graph and essentially part is the tech vectors that matter for you. This sounds like a very promising value proposition. If I'm, if I'm a, uh, if I have workload, production workload, certainly in the cloud and someone comes to me and says, you could have essentially a holistic view of your security posture 
um, at any given point in that state of operations. I'm going to look at it. So um, I'm compelled by it. And now tell me um, how it works. Is there overhead involved? What's the cost to, uh, not necessarily in dollars, but you, you know, you, I mean, I want to if you share the price, that'd be great. But like, I'm more thinking of me as a customer. What do I have to do? What operational things do I have to set up? Um, what's my cost operationally? And is there overhead to performance? You won't believe me, but there is, it's almost zero. Deploying Orca is literally three clicks. You just log into the application, you give it the permission, the read-only permission to the environment, and it does the rest. It doesn't run a single opcode in the environment. It doesn't send a single packet. It doesn't create any over at We have within our public customer list companies that have very uh, critical workloads, which are time sensitive. I can quote some names, companies like Databricks, Robinhood, Unity, uh, Sysense, Lemonade, and many others that have critical workloads that have deployed it for all of the environment in a very quick manner with zero inter in interruption to the business continuity. And I'm focusing on that because at the end of the day in large organization, friction is the number one thing that kills security. You want to deploy a new security tool, you need to talk with the team. The team says, okay, we need to check it doesn't affect the environment. Let's schedule it in six months. In six months, there is something more urgent and times fly by and think of a security team in a large enterprise that needs to coordinate with 500 teams and make sure it's deployed. It can't work yeah, it's an because we can guarantee. We do it because we leverage the native cloud capability. There's, there will be zero impact. This allows to have the coverage and find this really weak spot that nobody has been looking at. Yeah, I mean, this, having the technology you have is also good, but these security teams are burning out. Uh, and this is, brings up the cultural issue we were talking before we came on camera around the cultural impact of the security assessment kind of roles and responsibilities inside companies. Um, could you share your thoughts on this? Because this is a real dynamic. The people involved, I'll say people process technology, the classic, you know, things that are, that are impacted with digital transformation, but really the cultural impact of how developers push code, the business drivers, how the security teams get involved. And sometimes it's about the security teams are not under the CIO or under the different groups, all kinds of impacts to how the security team behaves in context to how code gets shipped. What's your v vision and, and view on the cultural impact of security in the cloud? So in fact, many times when people say that the cloud is not secure, I say that the culture that came with the cloud sometimes drive us to non-secure processes or less secure processes. If you think about that, only a decade ago, if an organization could deliver a new service in a year, it will be an amazing achievement from design to delivery. Now, if an organization cannot ship it within weeks, it's considered a failure. And this is naturally something that was enabled by the cloud and by the technologies that came with the cloud, but it also created a situation where security teams that used to be some kind of a checkpoint in the way are no longer in that position. They are in one end responsible to audit and make sure that things are acting as they should. But on the other end, things happen without the involvement. And this is a very, very tough place to be. And nobody wants to be the one that tells the business you can't move as fast as you want because the business wants to move fast. So this is essentially the friction that exists whether can we move fast and how can we move fast without breaking things and without breaking critical security requirements. So I believe that security is always about a triad of educate, there's nothing better than educate, about putting the guardrails to make sure that people cannot make mistakes, but also verify and audit because there will be failures in, even if you educate, even if you put guardrails, things won't work as needed. And essentially our position within this triad is to audit, to verify, to empower the security teams to see exactly what's happening. And this is an enabler for a discussion because if you see what are the risks de facto that you have, you know, you have this is an environment that haven't been patched for a decade with the past with one to six, it's a different case than I need you to look at this environment because I'm concerned that I haven't reviewed it in a year. That's exactly a great comment. And you mentioned friction kills uh, innovation earlier. This is one friction point, the mismatch of cadence between ownership of process 
business owners' goals of shipping fast, security teams wanting to be secure, and developers just want to write code faster too. <laughs> so, so productivity, burnout, innovation, all are a factor in cloud security. Um, what can a company do um, to get involved? And you mentioned it's easy to deploy. How do I work with Orca? You guys are just, is it a freemium? What is the business model? Um, how do I, how do I get in, how do I engage with you if I'm interested in, 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 in deploying? So one thing that I really love about the way that we work is that you don't need to trust a single word I said. You can get a free trial of Orca at our website, orca.security, run a scan on your cloud environment and see for yourself whether there are critical risks that were overlooked, whether everything is set and there is no need for a tool, or whether there is some areas that are very, that are neglected and can be acted any given moment or already been breached. We are not a freemium, but we offer free trials. And I'm also a big believer in simplicity and pricing. We just price by the average number of workloads that you have. You don't need uh, to read a long formula to understand the pricing. Reducing friction, it's a very ethos. Sounds like you guys have a good vision on making things easy and frictionless. That's, that's the, what we want. So let me ask you a question. So I want to get your thoughts because there's a lot of conversations in the industry around shifting left. And that certainly makes a lot of sense. Which controls in security do you want to shift left and which ones you want to shift right? So uh, let me put it that I've been in this industry for uh, more than two decades. And like any industry, every, every once in a while there's a trend and of something which is super valuable, but some people believe that this is the only thing that you need to know to do. And if you know Gartner hype cycle, at the beginning, every technology is the top of the hype and we believe that this can do everything. And then it reaches the plateau of productivity of the area of the value that it provides. Now, I believe that shifting left is similar to that, of course, you want to shift left as much as possible. You want things to be secure as they go out of the production line. This doesn't mean that you don't need to audit what's actually running because everything, you know, I can quote uh, Amazon CTO, Werner Vogels about everything that can break will break. Everything fails all the time. And you need to assume that everything will fail all the time, including all of the controls that you baked in. So you need to bake as much as possible early on and audit what actually happening in your environment to find the gaps, because this is the responsibility of security teams. Now, just checking everything after the fact, of course, it's a bad idea, but only investing in shifting left and education have no controls of what actually happening is a bad idea as well. A lot of people, um, first of all, it's a great, great call out there. I totally agree, shift left as much as possible, but also get the infrastructure and your foundational data strategies right on what you're watching and auditing. I have to ask you the next question on the context of the data, right? Because you could audit all day long, all night long, but you're going to have a, a, a pile of needles looking for a haystack of needles, as they say, and you got to have context and you got to understand when things can be um, jumped on. You can have alert fatigue, for instance. You don't know what to look at. You can have too much data. So how do you manage the, the difference between um, making their, the, the developers productive in the shift left more with the shift right auditing? What's the context and cloud? How do you guys talk about that? Because I can imagine, yeah, it makes sense, but I want to get the right alert at the right time when it matters the most. So I, we look at risk as a combination of three things. Risk is not only how pickable the lock is. If I'll come to your office and will tell you that your worst security issue is that the cleaning closet lock can be easily picked, you'll laugh at me. Technically, it might be the most pickable lock in your environment, but you don't care because the exposure is limited. You need to get to the office and there's nothing valuable inside. So I believe that we always need to take to look at risk as the exposure, who can reach that lock how easily pickable this lock is, and what's inside. Is it your critical crown jewels? Is it keys that can open another lock that includes these crown jewels, or just nothing? And when you take this into context, and the one, a wonderful thing about the cloud is that for the first time in the history of computing, the data that is necessary to understand the exposure and the impact is in the same place where you can understand also the risk of the locks, you can make a very 
concise decision of is this something that makes sense, that is a critical attack vector, there is a pickable lock, a critical vulnerability that is exposed in, that is an exposed service and the service have keys that can download all of my data, or maybe it's an internal service, but the port is blocked and it just have a default web server behind that. And when you take that, you can literally prioritize 0.1% of the alert, even less than that, that can be actually exploited versus the rest that uh, might have the same severity scores or sound as critical, but don't have a risk in terms of exposure or business impact. So this is what why context matters. I want to just connect what you said earlier and see if I get this right. What you just said about the lock being picked, what's behind the door, can be more keys. I mean, they're all there and the, the thieves know, know it too. It's bad guys know exactly what these vectors are and they're attacking them. But the context is critical. But, but now that's what you were getting at before by saying there's no friction or overhead because the old way was, you know, send probes out there, send people out in the network, send packets to go look at things, which actually will clutter the traffic up or, you know, look for patterns. That's reliant on footsteps or whatever metaphor you want to use. You don't do that because you just wire up the map. <laughs> you can, and then you put context to things that have weight. So I'm imagining graph technologies involved or machine learning. Is that right? Am I getting that kind of conceptually right that you guys are laying it out holistically and saying that's a lock that can, can be picked but no one really cares. So no one's going to pick it. And if they do, there's no consequence. Therefore move on and focus energy. Is that, is that kind of getting it right? Can you correct me where I got that uh, off or wrong? So you got it completely right. On one end, we do the agentless deep assessment to understand your workloads, your virtual machine, your container, your apps, and the risk that exists with them. And uh, using the side scanning technology that some people you know, call it like the MRI for the cloud. And we build a map to understand what they're connected to, the security groups, the load balancer, the keys that they hold, what these keys open. And we use this graph to essentially understand the risk. Now we have a graph that includes risk and ex exposure and trust. And we use this graph to prioritize the attack vectors that matters to you. So you might have thousands upon thousands of vulnerabilities on servers that are simply internal and these cannot be manifested that will be deprioritized. And 0.1% of them that can be exploited indirectly to a load balance and will be able to highlight this one, and this is the way to solve alert fatigue. We've been in large organizations that use other tools that add million critical alerts using their tools before Orca. We ran our scanner, we found 30. And you can manage 30 alerts if you are a large organization. You, no one can manage a million alerts. Well, I got to say, I love the value proposition. I think you're bringing a smart a view of this. I see you've had the experience there, Avi and team. Uh, congratulations, and it makes sense that the cloud is a, is a benefit. It can be leveraged. And I think security being rethought this way uh, is smart. And I, and I think it's being validated. Now, uh, I did check the news. You guys have raised significant traction as valuation, certainly raised a, a round of funding of 210 million, I believe, a series C funding over a billion dollar valuation, which was a unicorn um, status. Um, I'm sure that's a reflection of your customer traction. Could you share um, customer success that you're having. What's the adoption look like? What are some of the things customers are saying? Why do they like your product? Why is this happening? I mean, I can connect the dots myself, but I want to hear what your customers think. So definitely we're seeing huge traction. And uh, we are, uh, we grew by thousands of percent years over year, literally. We had times during late last year where our sales team, literally you had to wait two or three weeks till you manage to speak to a seller to work with Orca. And, the, and we see the reasons as organization have the same problems that we were uh, and that we are focusing it. They have cloud environments. They don't know their security posture. They need to own that. And they need to own it now in a way which guarantees coverage, guarantees that they'll see the important items and there was no other solution that could do that before Orca. And this is the fact, we literally reduce deployment project that takes months to minutes. And this makes it something that can happen rather than being on the roadmap and waiting for the next guy to come and do that. 
So this is what we hear from our customer. The basic value proposition of Orca haven't changed. We're providing literally cloud security that actually works, that is providing full coverage, comprehensive and contextual in a seamless manner. So talk about the uh, the benefits to the customers. I'll give you an example. Let's just say um, the Cube. We have our own cloud. It's growing like crazy, um, and uh, we have a DevOps team, very small team, and we start working with big companies, and they all want to know what our security posture is. I have to go hire a bunch of security people. Do I just work with Orca? Because so, that's the more of the trend is integration. I just was talking to another CEO of a hot startup, and the platform engineering conversations about people are integrating in the cloud and across clouds and on premises. So integration is all about posture as well too. I want to know, people want to know who they're working with. How does that, does that factor into anything? Because I think that's, that's, a, that's a, a table stakes for companies to have almost a, a posture report, almost like an MRI you said, or a, a clean bill of health. So definitely we are both providing the, the prioritized risk assessment. So let's say that you uh, your cloud team uh, want to check their security, their, your cloud security risk, they'll connect Orca, they'll see the top risks that are prioritized in a very, very clear way. What's been compromised, hopefully zero. What's in an imminent compromise, meaning a attacker can utilize today and you probably want to fix it as soon as possible and things that are hazardous in terms that they are very risky, but there is no clear tech vectors that can utilize them today. There might be things that uh, combining other changes will become imminent compromised. But on top of that, we understand that people also have compliance requirements. People are subject to a regulation like PCI, CCPA, ISO, NIST, and others. So we also show the results in the lens of these compliance frameworks. So you can essentially export a report showing, okay, we were scanned by Orca, and we comply with all of these requirements of SOC 2, et cetera. And this is another value proposition of essentially not only showing it in a risk lens, but also from the compliance lens. Yeah, you got to be always on with security and cloud. Avi, great uh, conversation. Thank you for sharing um, nice knowledge and going deep on some of the solution and appreciate your conversation. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Avi Shu, a CEO and co-founder of Orca Security, hot startup taking on security in the cloud and getting it right. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.